Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaiman on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the Earlham Dynasty here on NCAA 14 with the couch football revamp, of course. Today we go on the road for the very first time here in Season 2. We are taking on the Syracuse Orange from the ACC. We have a B-plus overall squad with an A-minus offense and a B-plus defense. And Kirk Herbstreit, or not Kirk, force of habit, Lee Corso is actually going to be rocking with him them here in this game. And, you know, they look like a much better team on paper, but they do have an outside linebacker out for an extended period of time. So we might be able to take advantage of it as their first loss of the season was to a ranked TCU squad. They lost 17-24, to whereas for us, a little bit more of a humbling experience. We lose by 40 points to North Texas. So we definitely have our work cut out for us for sure. But hey, man, with that being said, we're going to try to get ourselves right back on track as we take on the Orange of Syracuse University. It's going to be a good one, man, so make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you have to be brand new. Let's go ahead and get this game rocking and rolling. Let's go, baby. Let's get our first win this season. Alright man, so that being said, let's go ahead and get this thing rocking and rolling. And I'll tell you what, if we are going to lose, we are going to lose in a way that they're going to try to run it, uh, or at least uh, pass the ball over us. And of course they get to the outside. We had the box uh, packed up pretty well, but pa Peter Patterson, he was able to get to the outside still and got a first down because of it. So now they got a second and inch to deal with. Looks like they might be trying to go ahead. Run to the left-hand side, but instead it's a pass and it's incomplete. Mike Everett straight up throws behind the guy. And now we got him in a third and inches. We're going to pack this box a little more. Time to go to work now. Let's get these boys off the field as Everett drops back. Kids the out route on us. Carl Horn makes the catch for 11. Our defensive back was just completely turned around. I think it was Giante McLaurin who had the coverage. So now second and long coming up for the Orange. And it's looking real peachy for him, man. They are already across midfield. Mike Everett able to pick up the first down here. As he got another third and short coming up. And it's going to be a run up to good, but we get him off the field. Okay. That's the defense I'm talking about. Izzy Ray with the TFL. And now it's time for our offense to go to work, man. We, you know, couldn't get anything going against North Texas. We have to do a little bit better. Got to put ourselves in, you know, better situations. We can't, I don't think we're one of those teams that can pass the ball very well yet. So we have to get a run game going here in order to have a chance in this one. And Aaron Ball's going to be huge. You know, it can't just be Miami who's going to be uh, taking all of the carries. He's going to, Aaron Ball's going to have to step up as well. As we'll go ahead and try our first pass. But everybody seems like it was covered. So Miami Uagalie. He's going to go ahead and pick up seven with his legs. That's one thing that I do really like about this kid. He's got that 80 speed. So we can definitely roll him out and use him in that kind of fashion. As we had a dangerous throw, but Jariah Bond making the catch. That's good for nine before taking the shot right there. And, and now we're across midfield as well, man. We're looking pretty good to start this drive. As we throw over to the right-hand side, trying to get it to Adam Hill the third. It was a beautiful throw. But alas, it was incomplete, though. And so we have to go ahead on a second and ten. We should have had that first down. As Miami dropping back, going to go ahead. Throw it out to Terrain Patton, our backup quarterback. He's also listed as the backup tailback on, our, um, on the depth chart. And that time, he almost picks up a first down for us as Terrain Patton remains in the game. We throw quickly over to Adam Hill to third, who this time does hang on and make the catch. That's good for a gain of five. As now we got a first and ten. Miami dropping back. Trying to throw to the left-hand side. We had him. That was Joakim Short that we were trying to throw to. And we just did not work out for us. It was incomplete still. So third and long coming up here. Need to make a play. Trying to throw it to Joakim Short once again. 
but a little bit of a miscommunication. That's going to force us to go ahead and punt this thing away. As we're getting close to the end of the first quarter, man, we've been playing pretty strong. Um, Neither of us really getting anything going here early on offense as RJ Greenwake steps up and makes a tackle. It might be an assisted tackle because he needs a little bit of help getting him down, but we get him to a third and three. Let's get him off the field once again as they run to Patterson, who runs up the middle. He gets out of there, breaks some, some tackles, and now it's turned into a foot race. Reggie Chapman, the closest person there, he can't bring him down either. Syracuse gets their first touchdown on the board. You hate to see it because we had guys there to make the play. And because we did it, it turns into seven points the other way. And that's how this first quarter going to end as well. Syracuse taking an early 7 to nothing lead. We've been playing well overall despite that one long touchdown. Let's get some points of our own. All right, man. Second quarter now officially underway as Miami will drop back. Tries to throw it over the middle. But it's intercepted. We were looking for Joakim Short. He was open off the break. But Miami throws a terrible ball. Terrible ball. And that means that it is going to be intercepted. And now Syracuse has the football right back. So defense put in a bad spot. And we need to go ahead and step up as Levine is just brought to the ground with a 40. Stiff armed into the next dimension. Again, we have guys there to make the play, but it's crazy about a running back and stiff arm a defensive tackle into the ground. That blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind, but hey, that being said, we do have a third and long go coming up here still. Let's go ahead. Let's try. Just get them off the field. Make them settle for a field goal as they throw over the middle, and look who's open. Carl Horn. We had guys there, but they don't react in time, unfortunately. So a goal line situation coming up for Syracuse. And they take it to Patterson up the middle. He nearly picks up the touchdown. A gain of five is going to put him on the one inch line it seems like. As we try to stack it up a little bit here. Trying to force them to try to go in. And we do get that third down stop. They try to throw it. Try to do up. Try to get cute. We force the incompletion for now. But there's a fourth and goal coming. Halfback draw, and Patterson finds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. On a fourth down, too. We really needed that. And Syracuse from the ACC. We're midway through this first, uh, second quarter. And it's now a two-score lead for the first time today. Offense really needs to step up right now, but we're just not getting it at the moment. Miami on a third and long, trying to pass it up again. Just not clicking on those anticipation routes. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but... Now we have to put it away to Syracuse as Burnett is going to return it. He's got great. Oh, no. This could be a touchdown if we're not careful. Thomas Hall, he's our last line of defense, and he can't make the tackle either. So we give up a special team score on top of it, too. And what killed us last game is we had a one quarter where we just absolutely fall, fell apart. And this might be the quarter for us here, man. Since the last play of the first quarter, it has not been a good run for us whatsoever. Just giving up long plays. Just playing sloppy on all sides of the ball. Special teams, defense, offense. Nothing is clicking right now. And that's why we really need this first down right now. We only need an inch. We we'll see if Aaron Ball can pick it up for us. He cuts it back inside and does manage to pick up the first down. A gain of one, but at the same time, that's really all we needed. So we got another first and ten coming up for the Quakers. As Miami will drop back. They got the inside contained, trying to scramble with it. Had a hole, but we did not exploit it fast enough as Wesley Harper, he gets his first sack of the game. He's now got second and long now coming up. Miami dropping back. Hit as he's thrown, trying to get it on the inside, looking for Danny Carson. That's incomplete as well, and now we have a third and long waiting for us here. Not a good look for us whatsoever as Miami... Looking over the middle, and look who it is. Joakim Short making the catch. You'll love to see it. Beautiful throw by Miami. He's capable of making those throws. We just want to see him do it on a more consistent basis. As Miami drops back, he tries to lob it for St. Valhelm, but he throws it literally between two guys. So he can throw a dot like we saw for Joakim Short, but then just miss on the really easy ones as well. And that leads to another interception. Syracuse couldn't capitalize, thankfully, but 
We're still down by free scores. We got to play better in the second half. All right, man, second half underway. You know, first half, you know, we kind of fell apart a little bit towards the end. But, I mean, overall, we haven't been playing too terribly bad, all things considered. You know, still have a lot of young guys on the squad. They're going to learn eventually. But, you know, for now, let's see if we can just finish strong here in the second half at the very least. I want to try to see, you know, what kind of resolve this team has now that we have some adversity our way down by three scores. As Miami drops back, he's going to scramble again to the right-hand side. Sliding down too, so at least having the presence of mind of trying to avoid taking the hit because Miami is legitimately the centerpiece of our offense as of right now. So we do need him to be healthy if we're going to have any chance of moving the ball downfield. As Miami tries to throw it over the middle, was looking for Joakim Short. And that was nearly intercept as well. Pressure really sped up that decision making. We even had a guy open and... We didn't throw to that guy, obviously. That's why we have our defense on the field. We get a sack. And look who gets that sack. Izzy Ray. They don't count it as one, but, I mean, the quarterback took a loss. So I'm counting it as a sack in my book. That's a second TFL of the day, though. So that's something that I definitely love to see as Carl Horn uh, picks up uh, the lost yardage and a little bit more. So now third and six coming up here. Looks like tight end going into the motion as Everett drops back. Facing the blitz. Nobody is there. Who's supposed to cover that guy? We have man coverage across the board. No one should be getting that wide open. But just goes to show our defense, you know, still has some work to be done. As we do end up getting him off the field, though. Maurice Burden gets whooped by our main man, Justin Burden. He lit that dude up like a Christmas tree. And so we get the ball back in our hands for right now as Miami drops back. Going to throw it short to Aaron Ball. He gets stuck on a lineman. Might be Jacoby Black who might have impeded um, his movement a little bit. But we still got the first down though. So we can't really complain. As now we got first and 10. Miami drops back. Nobody is open though. Just looking for somebody. You know just to get open. We tried to throw it away. But again it's um just another incomplete. Uh, just another sack. Not a good look. Is now we got a second and long. We try to run it here too. And Syracuse is really catching on to what we're trying to do. And so third and 20. Just trying to pick up some positive yards. We try to throw it to St. Valhelm. We had him open. But once again, the ball was off target. But even, you know, it seems like, you know, we're not, you know, I don't know how to say it. But we're still down by three scores. But... That being said, we'll see if we can finish strong at the very least. You know, it's just been a tough day for us, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Defense has been playing great in this one. Like, no matter how many points they give up, you know, can't really blame us on the defense. As Patterson breaks another one, and he gets 41 yards. We keep him out of the end zone. Matthew Sands does get the tackle, his seventh one of the day. But still first and goal, though. They go to the outside. Patterson! Able to force his way in there. Pause. And it's 28 to nothing. And that's what happens when your offense can't really move the ball. You know, a lot of quick possessions for us, it seems like, today. As we get a nice little spark here. Danny Carson makes a catch. Breaks a tackle, too. And that's our biggest play of the day. 29 yards for the first down. And this is what's been crazy. We actually have a similar number of first down plays at the Syracuse Orange do. As Aaron Hill almost makes a catch. That would have been a big gain for us as well. But that's incomplete sadly. So now we got 2nd and 10 now coming up. Miami dropping back. Looking around. Find, trying to find somebody open. Go with the uh, bullet pass this time around. Not risking the, uh, you know, the lob. And Zane Valhelm gets his first catch of the day. Good for 27. As we got 3rd and long now. Miami will drop back. Going to try to throw it to uh, the tailback Aaron Ball. He was coming open over in the middle, but we threw behind him. And at this point in the game, we just have to go ahead and try to pick up this first down. Field goals just aren't going to cut it. And Miami, knowing that nobody is an open, he runs for his life and ends up picking a first down here in the process. So now a few plays later, third and goal coming up. Let's see if we can punch it in the end zone here. And we do just that. Touchdown, Earlham. And we finally get ourselves on the board here. 
And we also force a free and out as well. We uh, get Syracuse off the field quickly. And, hey, you never know. Less than three minutes left. There's still a free score game. But if we can score in this possession too and we can do it quickly, that will be really helpful to us right now as Miami drops back. Going to throw quickly to the left-hand side. Beautiful throw to Jariah Bond. And he gets another nice catch as well. First and 10 for the Quakers. As Earlham progresses downfield, Miami drops back. Trying to throw it to the corner. I think he was looking for Jariah Bond once again. But couldn't get a good ball for him. So that's incomplete. So now second and 10, dropping back. Gets it to Joakim Short over the middle who leaves for that ball and hangs on to make the catch. And that's exactly what we like to see. It's possession guy coming up and making those plays. He's a little undersized, 5'11", but that being said, he can still come out and make plays for us. And we're seeing it towards the end of this game. And this is one thing that I do like about doing a walk-on dynasty. We're not going to be good right away. We're not going to be a powerhouse right away, and I'm cool with that. But adds to the challenge as second and five, trying to get it to Joakim Short, who almost makes a beautiful play. But that's going to be incomplete, sadly. And now third and five coming for the Quakers. Miami dropping back, trying to throw it over the middle. We had him. We had dude open. That was Miami Thomas. That would have been a touchdown if we just threw a decent ball. But instead, fourth and five coming up. They try, Coach wanted to call a bubble scream. And Syracuse was just all over it. And we actually turned the ball over on downs. The Syracuse Orange are going to turn around and go ahead and run out the remainder of this clock. But it's going to be the end of the game, and Syracuse is going to go ahead and win this one by a final score of 28-7. to And honestly, a lot of our problems are on the offensive side of the ball. Let's go check out the stats just to be sure. So it was a really... Difficult loss for us to take at the end of the day. We end up losing 28 to 7. I did like how our defense played, and as a team overall, we seem to have really settled down. Considering this was a team that did start off ranked in the top 25. Losing by three touchdowns isn't that big of a deal, but man, do we really still need to work on some things on the offensive side of the ball? We only score seven points in this one once again. So checking out the player stats in Miami. Uh Uwagalie is going to struggle yet again. He had 16 for, uh, for 33 on the passing, 177 yards. Had two interceptions as well, as well as took three sacks. This could be a long season for Miami as, as our only scholarship quarterback. We really need to figure out how to figure some of these things out because we are on the struggle bus right now. As for our running game, we tried to get it going, but not too much was happening. Aaron Ball did lead us with 16 carries for 46 yards, and Miami did have 19, uh, 19 yards on the ground as well. Terrain Patton had her only touchdown. He had one carry as the backup tailback for us, by the way. It was for one yard. On the receiving end, it was a nice, even little spread, uh, but it was mostly between two receivers, uh, Joakim Short and Aaron Ball. They each had four catches collectively. Um, yeah, we didn't do much on the uh, <laughs> passing attack, so nothing too much to see here. Blocking, we had both Nate Coleman and Brian Smith give, us, give up sacks for us, so that's a tough pill to swallow as well. Defensively, Matthew Sands led the day for us. He had a heck of a game uh, on the defensive line. He had seven uh, total tackles, two of which were TFLs, two sacks, which is very promising to see. Now, it was also the only two sacks that we had today. Nobody else um, got to the quarterback. It was literally just uh, Matthew Sands with Justin Byrne and Josh Brown not too far behind. And also, we didn't force any turnovers, so once again, we did lose that turnover battle once again. So next episode will actually be the final non-conference game that we have here in Season 2 where we go on the road once again, but this time we'll go to UNLV, who's also 0-2. Hopefully we can use this as an opportunity to get ourselves together a little bit on the offensive side of the ball because if we can play how we played, you know, just in that Syracuse game, like from the defensive end, but then have a competent offense, I think we can win some games, man, but... Hopefully you can figure it out, but in, and until then, if you guys enjoy the content here on this channel, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as hit subscribe. You have to be brand new to the channel. And like what you see as well, 
In the meantime, I hope you guys are all out there having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.